Hi, I'm Rahul Shah and I'm here to share with you how to create and deliver impactful speeches. Lesson number four on how to craft and deliver impactful speeches. Make your content engaging. A lot of us are always stuck with information and content that is dry, dull and boring. Nobody wants to listen to that. Nobody wants a presentation that's all technical data and information and systems and processes. Yes, that information is important. You may need to get it across to your audience, but there are many different ways how you can put that across to your audience. You have to add in a lot more components into your speeches and presentations to bring those speeches to life, to bring those presentations to life so that the audience can get excited and enthusiastic about what you're saying. So there are many different tools that you can use to make your content engaging. Uh, you could use humor, for example. When you can make people laugh, you're dropping that wall of suspicion, skepticism, critic that the audience will be coming in with. You're making them a friendly audience and therefore you come across as a friendly presenter and speaker. It helps to bridge the distance between you and your audience. So humor might be a tool that you can use. You could use references, quotes. When you quote people of prominence, popularity, authority, it gives more credibility to whatever you're saying. Remember a lot of times about what, not what you're saying, but who is saying it, that makes a lot of difference. And sometimes we may not have the personal credibility to say it, but we can borrow credibility by quoting people who have that credibility already. So you can use quotes, you can use references, you could use, uh, you could use pictures and props to help you to make it a lot more illustrative, uh, to bring it to life, to make it a lot more visual for your audience. So there are different tools that you can use we're not going to go in depth for a lot of them, but let us go in depth for one particular tool that I personally love a lot and I truly believe in. This tool is called storytelling. A speech and a presentation that is infused in stories serves as a Trojan horse to very subtly and gently get straight not only into the minds of your audiences, but into the hearts of your audiences. Through stories, you're able to connect with your audiences at a much deeper level, beyond just the logical level. You're able to connect with them at an emotional level that makes your messages come across a lot more personal, a lot more impactful, and a lot more relatable. People find it easier to resonate with stories because they have been used and conditioned to receive stories from the time that they were in their cradles. Stories leave impressions on people's minds because stories evoke feelings and emotions that are harder to forget. Remember that quote by Maya Angelou that was something to the effect that people will never ever forget how you made them feel? Those stories help you to do that. People will never be able to forget a good story that evokes a good feeling to them, that makes them feel nostalgic, that makes them feel excited, that makes them feel happy, that makes them feel hopeful. Uh, good stories are always welcome. Remember those, and people don't forget stories easily. Remember the first time when you heard Three Little Pigs? or the three basketeers, or when you first heard about Cinderella, you heard the stories years ago. But today, just the mere mention of the titles of the stories bring back the memories that you most fondly associate with the experiences behind those stories that you have had. So sharing great stories helps you to do that. From Martin Luther King to Obama to Lee Kuan Yew, a lot of them were fantastic storytellers. And through those stories, they've not only been able to persuade and influence people, but they have rewritten courses of history. And that's how powerful storytelling is. It's one of the most powerful tools that you can use in your arsenal. So how do you tell a good story? To tell a good story, you first understand how stories work. Stories are made up of what we call the story mix. A story requires a character, a story requires a plot, a setting, or a context. A story requires conflict. A story requires motion. Now, let me go through each of these, but before that, let me tell you a story. Now, this may take a bit of time, so I want you to sit back and relax. Put that pen down, put the paper aside just for the moment, and just listen to this personal story of mine. It was 2 a.m. in the morning, I was walking home one day after a long day at work. I was walking towards my lift lobby, I was passing by this big open football field that is at the front of my block. Nothing unusual about it is a typical football field that you find in many estates around your neighborhood. But as I took a glance towards it accidentally, I noticed something really strange. At 2 a.m. in the morning, in the middle of the night, right smack in the middle of the football field, there's a lady in a long red dress, long hair, 
extremely pale looking, standing still and doing nothing but staring straight up at a full moon in the sky. And I wondered why. Why was there this lady in a long red dress, long hair, pale looking, standing absolutely still and staring straight up at a full moon in the sky at 2 a.m. in the morning. My curiosity got the better of me and I stood there and I observed her for a couple of seconds. And as I observed her, I noticed that she took a step forward. And as she took that step forward, I noticed she was wearing this pink color high heels. As she put her foot down, the heel snapped and she fell forward. Now, how many of you imagined or visualized a lady in a long red dress with long hair and very pale looking standing in the middle of a field? I'm sure you did. Most people do. Now, I want you to reflect on the fact that neither did I ask you to visualize nor did I ask you to imagine at any point before my story. I simply told you a story, but during the course of the story, you could not but help yourself get into the whole mode of visualizing and imagining whatever I was sharing with you. Now, this boils down to a very simple fact on how the mind works. We do not receive and store information in a .txt format. We store all information that we receive in a .jpg or .gif format. We have this natural ability to take all information and immediately convert it into visuals. Now, why is that powerful? Because visuals evoke emotions. There's visuals that you see in your minds or you think about. They often trigger certain feelings, emotions that you associate with those emotions. And that is why storytelling becomes really powerful. They draw your audience in, they make them visualize whatever you're telling them, and therefore they start to see what you want them to see, and with that visualization, they not only see what you want them to see, they start to feel how you want them to feel. And that is a very critical step in getting them to then do what you need them to do. So if you want to influence or persuade someone to act how you want them to act, or take the kind of action you want them to take, then, if, then storytelling becomes a vital tool in your repository of tools in your speeches or in your presentations. So don't shy away from using stories. Use stories. Now what worked in that story is the more details you give them, the more they'll be able to visualize your stories with precision. And the more they'll be able to immerse themselves in your entire storytelling process, converting themselves from just being a passive audience into an active audience where they are actively experiencing what you want them to experience. So you need a character. The lady in the red dress was my character. And I described the character for you so that you can picture her the way I, pick, I saw her. Number two, there has to be a setting, a plot, or a context. In this case, the setting was 2 a.m. in the morning, open field, in front of a blog, in the pitch darkness where there's a full moon in the sky. That was my setting. Right? So in your case, it could be a context, it could be a scenario, it could be a problem, it could be something else. But you've got to frame up that context, you've got to frame up that setting for your story to make sense. You've got to give a background so that people can visualize your characters or your stories against a certain backdrop or against a certain scenario. There has to be a contrast. In my story, the whole contrast was the fact that it was in the middle of the night and there was somebody standing in the middle of the field doing nothing for no reason. And you, it probably evoked curiosity, it probably evoked fascination, it probably evokes a kind of interest. Uh, there has to be motion. You've got to keep people moving along the story. Now, if I tell you a story that says, once upon a time there's a bird, the bird was sitting on a branch. The bird continued to sit on a branch. Five seconds later, the bird was still on a branch. That's not going to be a very exciting story, right? But if I tell you that once upon a time there's a bird sitting on a branch, it was feeling really hungry. It spotted a worm down below, and it set its eyes against it. It bent its knees, it got into flight mode, it prepared itself, and when the moment was right, it spread its wing and swooped down, took the worm and flew off. Now that was a better story than the first version. Not the best story, but it's a better story than the first version. It probably would have got you to follow along with it a lot better. 
So story has a motion. Remember, motion creates emotion. Motion also creates momentum. People get excited when a story moves at a certain pace. So don't go too slow. While you want to share details, don't give that many details. Your story suddenly becomes this really, really slow motion movie. But you want it to be a fast, action-packed storyline. This is why you really love Transformers or why you love Fast and Furious because there's a lot that's happening in, in a short burst of time and it keeps us going around, keeps us excited, keeps us engaged. So lesson number four, use engaging content. Should you have any questions that you want to ask further to what I've shared in this video, please put them down in the comment section below and I'll personally come back to you with an answer to your questions and your queries. Like this video and subscribe to the Ideas and Inspiration channel so that you can get more of these training videos coming up, a wealth of resources delivered to you absolutely free of cost. Ladies and gentlemen, see you really soon.